You write about uh, being very anxious when you have to make public speeches and also just going through. I mean, there's a point where you're talking, I think, to your therapist and you're talking about um, uh, how you wake up in the morning just dreading going into work sometimes. And when you're with your kids, you're like thinking about work. And when you're at work, you're thinking about your kids and Sunday comes and it's it's something that is very relatable, but I didn't really understand what was going on with you. And I'd like you to sort of explain to us why you told us about that and, and, and what your hopes are for how that, you know, is laid out there. You know, it's it's so funny because I feel like there are certain things that I say on the air and that I've said for years on the air that don't really land. Maybe people think you're joking. They think you're, you know trying to uh, rib yourself or be self-deprecating. But I've talked about being extremely socially anxious and this fear of public speaking that I have. Two things that necessarily don't align with the career that I have chosen to have now for 23 years. And so, um, you know, it's one of these things where it had started to become debilitating. Like I would make it so um, the fear of waking up and going out and speaking in front of the audience and to the audience at home. And if I had something to do after work that involved an audience, I would be uh, like a, a shaking, like a near wreck. I couldn't eat. If I had to do another talk show in the evening, you know, if I had to do a letterman say, I wouldn't be able to eat for the entire day because I would be, my stomach would be in knots. And um, I think I, it didn't really land until I wrote about it, which is such an interesting thing when you think about it. It's like the written word sometimes has more depth to it or breadth to it, or people take it more literally when you when you write it down. And I, I think I wrote about it because I know that I'm not alone because I work with so many people who are functioning. Uh, you know, there are high functioning people that have so much anxiety in their lives and the way that people choose to deal with it. I mean, there are so many different ways people choose to deal with it. You know, I went to therapy because I found that I was not, my coping skills, I didn't have the tools. I had no tools. So my tools were to allow my brain to consume itself and for me to work myself into a state of terror. You know, when we were doing Hope and Faith, that was in front of a live studio audience every Friday night. And Faith Ford would have to come in and sort of pull me out of the dressing room. And I would be shaking and trembling backstage. And she would just be caressing me and holding me. And she's like, it's going to be great. You have so much fun when you're out there. And she's right. When I'm out there, I have so much fun, but it's the buildup before. And so I really sought therapy as a way to sort of deal with the stress and learn how to manage my own anxiety and learn different breathing techniques, meditation techniques, and sort of asking myself these questions like, so then what? Well, if you bomb, so then what? Well, hmm. Well, then what would happen? You know, and the answers are always, well, nothing happens. Life goes on, right? And so I think I wrote about it to prove to people that if if I can do what I do and embarrass myself <laughs> literally at least six to seven times a week, right, in profound and large ways on live TV and in ways I – sometimes I embarrass myself in ways I never even see coming – but it doesn't kill you. It really doesn't kill you. And if you can just learn tools to manage your stress, whether it's with an app, whether it's with a, a with a group therapy or private therapy, or you know, there's so many different ways now because people talk about it in a more open fashion. And I think the more people talk about it, or somebody like me who may seem put together, but 
you know, to know that I'm really like the duck floating on the water that you see and the duck is sitting there and you don't really see the ripples, but underneath the water, the ducks, you know, you see those legs are working overtime to know that that is happening to me. Like as we are doing this right now, I can honestly tell you that if you could see my, my legs are shaking.